Okay, so this is lesson 48. This is the third and most difficult one. Um, we're going to go through it. We'll probably only get through three problems on this lesson because there does take a long process, okay? So, but it's not so difficult once you see the process, okay? You have, you have some concepts, you know, things that we know from Algebra 1 that when we expand, remember foiling, first outside, inside, last. Or when we're multiplying, we've done that a lot. Just basic skills that you should have, and then also like if you see patterns, it's good to skip steps so so you save a little time here and there. Okay? Because once you get to higher level of math, you're gonna you know you're gonna need to know that. All right. So today, if you um, look at your steps, I asked you to write up there. There's a new step four and step five. So if you're on the video, make sure you pause and write this in your in your notes. But step four and step five are the new ones. Isolate the second radical term with its coefficient. You'll notice that because we have two radicals. And then step five, square both sides, okay? So these are two extra steps. But it's the same concept repeated, okay? So here we go. Number one. I'm going to erase number two because I want you to focus just on number one. Because number one takes a lot of work. I need the whole page. So just watch for now because we're going to only do three problems. And I'm going to give you plenty of time to talk and to write, okay? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Number one, so we got square root of 4m plus 5 is equal to 2 plus square root of 2m minus 1. So you're noticing here we have two square root signs, one on the left and one on the right. Sometimes they're both on the left, sometimes they're both on the right. But nonetheless, the first thing you always want to do is isolate one of them. In this case, this left one is already isolated. So I, since one's isolated, I could square both sides. So all eyes up here. All eyes up here, pencils down. So. When I square, remember last week, whenever I square the whole side, I have to put parentheses around the whole side, and I square it. So the left side's pretty easy, because the square root and square sign, they just cancel out, and all you're left with is 4m plus 5. Okay, the right side, though, I have to square this whole right side, which is a binomial. We've got 2 plus square root of 2m minus 1. Okay? So this is just like saying 2 plus square root of 2m minus 1 times itself. So... I could write it out like this on my paper if I wanted to, okay? So we're squaring itself. So now we have to FOIL. We got 2 times 2 is 4, okay? 2 times square root of 2m minus 1 is positive 2 times the square root of 2m minus 1, okay? Right? So I'm doing, I've done the first one, and now I've done the outside. Okay, now I'm going to go on the inside. Square root of 2m minus 1 times 2 is going to be positive 2 times the square root of 2m minus 1. Okay, then I'm going to do the last one. Square root of 2m minus 1 times the square root of 2m minus 1 is positive 2m minus 1 because the square roots cancel out because when you square a square root, the square root cancels out. So, <clears throat> now I have the uh, common or I'm sorry, I put this into its own parentheses. Now I'm going to organize this whole right side because it's kind of messy. I got some constants and I got some, some um, um, terms that could be combined. So I'm going to combine the like terms. So first thing I'm going to do is just bring them on the left side. 4m plus 5 is equal to... I'm going to bring my constants down. I got 4 plus a negative 1. Okay, And I put this into parentheses because I want to combine the like terms. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. Okay, next thing I have is positive 2m. I'm going to bring that down over here. Okay, and then we got positive 2 times the square root of 2m minus 1 plus positive 2 times the square root of 2m minus 1. These are both like terms, so 2 plus 2 is 4. So I have 4 po uh, square roots of 2m minus 1. Okay, now I'm going to combine like terms. I want to isolate the second square root with its coefficient. Okay, so this whole thing I want it to be by itself. Right now it's not by itself. I have this 3 plus 2m. I'm going to subtract these two and move them to the left. So I'm going to subtract 3 and subtract 2m on both sides. When I subtract 3 on both sides, um, I'm sorry, if I subtract 2m on both sides, 4m minus 2m is going to be 2m. Okay, subtract 3 on both sides. 5 minus 3 is positive 2. Okay, and we got 4 red 2m minus 1. Okay, now this is isolated. Would you agree that this right side is isolated? Yeah. Now this is just like last week. 
Okay, but before I want to square stuff, I want to make sure I could simplify. So, can I sim can I simplify anything from these three terms? I have two m, two and four. What can I simplify out of these three terms or factor? Two, two right? Doesn't two go into each of these? Yeah. Yeah. So. I know that 2 goes into all of them, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 because I want to simplify as much as I can before I square it because it gets out of hand sometimes. So 2m two divided, two divided by 2 is m. 2 divided by 2 is positive 1. Bring down the equal sign. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Square root of 2m minus 1. Okay. Now this is isolated, so I'm going to square both sides. So this left-hand side is just like me saying m plus 1 times m plus 1, right? Square it. So when I square this, at this point you should know how to foil this out. You don't have to show your work always. You could go m squared plus 2m plus 1, right? That's what the left side turns into. The right side, this is going to square. So I know that 2 squared is 4, okay? Right, 2 squared is 4. Then we got square root of 2m minus 1 squared. Cancels out, so all you got is 2m minus 1, okay? Now we've gotten rid of the square root term, so we're going to distribute this 4 times 2m. is going to be 8m. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Bring down the rest of the problem. Okay. And now I have like terms. I got m's on both sides and negative, uh, constants on both sides. I'm going to subtract 8m, bring it over this side, and add 4 to both sides. So when I do that, I get m squared minus 6m plus 5 is equal to 0. x box, right? I can even do that in my head. I'm going to get m minus 5 and m minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, m is equal to 5 and m is equal to 1. Okay? These are my solutions, right? Now, last step, what should I always do? Check it, right? So, we got to check for extraneous solutions. So, I'm going to put this into my original problem. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus 5 is 25, right? Square root of 25 is 5. So, on the left side, I got, if I'm checking my work, we got 5 is equal to, or square root of 25, if you wanted to look at it that way. Okay. And then the right side, I'm plugging in 5 in again. We got 2 times 5 is 10. 10, 10 minus 1 is 9. nine. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 2? 5. 5. Is 5 equal to 5 in my problem? Yeah, of course. So that's a good solution, right? Next one, we're going to put in 1. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3, okay, I'm going to put 1 back into here, I got 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so square root of 1 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, so they both work, right, so these are both valid solutions, okay, so I could write my answer as this, m is equal to 5, or m is equal to 1, you could also write it like I showed you last time in the set notation, 1 and 5 should be your answer, okay, they're both the same, I've talked about this. Okay, that's number one. It took a long time, right? So since these problems take a while, I'm going to have you talk to me about them. So, and I'm going to give you plenty of time to write. So one to all the two is about all of number one. I just want you to talk right now. Talk through the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to give you time to write right after, so don't worry about writing. I want you to talk about it, okay? Ready, set, ones are talking. Go. See on these together. So number, th we're going to jump to number two now. Oh, that's number two. Here we go. So I'm going to erase number two. Okay, so write that down, number two. We're going to do this one together. Number two together. Okay. Very important you take your time through this. This problem will be on your test, this type of problem, okay? Okay, so first thing you want to do is isolate one of the radicals. Step one, is one of the I radicals isolated? Turn to your neighbor and tell me yes or no. Yeah. Okay, good. So we're going to square both sides, okay? So we're doing this together. Everyone should have a pencil in their hand working together with me. So the right side we're going to square, okay? What happens when you square a square root? Cancels out, right? We have that. It's like an easier problem when we do that, right? So we're doing that. But the left-hand side is all a binomial, we have to square it out, okay? So remember foiling, right? I'm not going to write this out, but would you all agree that negative 1 plus the square root of 4 and plus 1, to do this squared, you just do negative 1 plus the square root of 4 and plus 1 times itself, would you all agree with that? Yeah. Good, so let's just 
I'm not gonna write this all out. So what's negative one squared? One. Good. What's negative one times the outside, which would have been square root of four and plus one? Negative one times the square. Okay. Now we're gonna do the inside. Square root of four and plus one times negative one is. Yeah, it's going to be the same thing, negative 1 times the square root of 4 and plus 1. Okay? And then what's uh, square root of 4 and plus 1 times the square root of 4 and plus 1? Yeah, positive 4 and plus 1. And I'm putting it into its own parentheses because that's the, what was inside the radical sign, okay? Now, I want to show you something. What similarity do you notice to this? Look up here, here, and look at number 1 here. What do you notice to here and number two when we get to here? What do you notice there? What are you noticing? Turn to your neighbor and notice. Tell me, what do you notice about here? And look at number one right <coughs> here. Look at these two and what they become. And now look at... Okay, what, what's the pattern? Shh, what do you notice? What should this become, by the way? Good, okay, y'all looking up here? So this should be negative 2 times the square root of 4n plus 1. So... Let's just, instead of like writing this all out all the time, this is kind of tedious, right? So don't, don't worry about, um, don't worry about always writing everything out. Just use the pattern. So we know this was negative one times two, which is going to be negative two, square root of four and plus one. Okay. That's what I wanted to show you. So I, wanted to, I want you to take shortcuts where you can because there are patterns in math. Otherwise you're using a lot of time. These are big problems. We don't have a lot of time to do a big problem by writing it out. Okay. Next step, okay, we did step two, which includes expanding the two term sides. Step three, combine like terms to one side, okay? So on the left-hand side, let's start combining like terms. We have a one. One plus one is two. Okay, good. I like putting the, the monomial next. Positive four in. Let's bring it down here. And then bring down the rest of the problem, negative two times four in plus one. All equal to three in minus two, Okay. <clears throat> step four. Can you read step four to your neighbor? The new step four. <coughs> okay, so my second radical, is it isolated? Is my second I radical isolated? No. So how do I isolate negative two times four n plus one? Subtract two and? Good. So we're going to subtract two. So what's negative two minus two? Good. What's three n minus four n? Good, so we're going to write this down. We're going to subtract this on both sides. We've got negative 2 times negative 1n minus 4. Okay? All right. Do we have an isolated square root sign with... Yes. You could put negative in, yeah. I did that so I explicitly show everyone what the answer is there. Okay? So now we have to square both sides. We're going to square the left side first. Okay? What's negative 2 squared? What's negative 2 squared? 4, good. And then what's the square root of 4n plus 1 squared? What's the square? What is uh, square root of 4n plus 1 squared? Okay, that's the left side, right side. Now, this is like a binomial expansion, so what is negative 1n squared? n squared, right? Okay, what should my second term be? Negative 1n times negative 4 is? 4n. So what should my middle term be? Remember how we took a shortcut here? What would you write here? Turn your neighbor, discuss, go. 
Talk to your neighbor about it. Okay, so what would my second term here be, everyone? 8n. Okay, why is it 8n? Look up here, I'll show you why. Because what's negative 1n times negative 4? 4n. But we have to do that twice. What's negative 1 times negative 4? Or negative 1n times negative 4? 4? 4n again. So 4n plus 4n is? 8n. Good. Okay, now we're going to go last term. Negative 4 squared is? 16. Okay. Can we, um, can we combine like terms yet? No, we have to distribute that 4. So we're going to distribute 4 times 4n is going to be 16n. 4 times 1 is 4. Then we're going to bring down the rest of the problem. we got the trinomial n squared plus 8n plus 16. Okay? And I'm going to give you the rest of the problem. I want you to combine like terms. Subtract 16 and 4 on both sides. And then factor, tell me what my solutions are. Do not do extraneous solutions, okay? I want you to finish up my problem. I'll be walking around checking up on you. Go. And? Good. N equals 6 and N equals 2, right? You should have subtracted. You would have had a trinomial here. So N equals 6 and N equals 2. Okay, now we have to plug them in. So let's plug in 6. I'll do this together with you. Look up here. Eyes up here. 24, or I'm sorry, 4 times 6 is? 24 plus 1. Square root of 25. 5, okay, we got negative 1 plus 5 is? 4. 4, good, okay. That's the left side. Right side, putting in 6 in. 3 times 6 is? 18. 18 minus 2 is? 18. Square root of 16? 4. Good, okay. Is 4 equal to 4? Yes. Good, so this is a valid solution. n equals to 6 is a valid solution, okay? So let's plug in 2 now. 2 times 4 is? 8 plus 1 is? Square root of 9 is? Good. Negative 1 plus 3 is? 2. Okay, so that's the left side. Right side. Okay. Uh, 3 times 2 is? 6 minus 2 is? Square root of 4 is? 2. Okay, so is 2 equal to 2? Good. Okay, so these are both valid solutions. Okay? That's number 2. Questions on, on this problem? Okay. I'd like to know where you're at right now. Give me a thumbs up if you... you if you understand it, but, you know, you need practice. It's still a little hard. Give me a thumbs down if you're, like, lost someplace and you need something explained. Okay, what's up? Sorry, I wanted number six because this is a special one, okay? So write this one down. This one's in your notes. Okay, so turn to your neighbor, tell them uh, what to do about step one. We got, isolate the radical, tell them what you would do. Go. Okay, so do we, do we have a, a radical that's isolated already? Okay, sometimes you don't, sometimes you have to move that term, okay? So we already do, so we're going to square both sides. Square root of 1 minus 5n, okay? So this one's easy. What does that turn into on the right side? 1 minus 5n, right? We're doing this one together. Left side, we got to square this whole side, okay? Turn to your neighbor and square it, and tell me, and in about 30 seconds, tell me what I would write, okay? Okay, what's my trinomial going to be? What's the first term? Good. What's the second term? Minus what? Minus, good. Minus 4, square root of 9 minus n. Okay, last term is going to be? Plus what? What should there should be parentheses? Parentheses what? Good nine minus n right? Okay, and I'm asking you to put parentheses around that last term because this this is a binomial and we're gonna add it, but sometimes there's a subtraction sign here, right? So we need to make sure we include that. Okay. Okay, so we did step two. Good step three. Combine like terms. What can I combine here with the four? Good, so 4 plus 9 is? <coughs> 13. 
4 plus 9 is 13. Excellent. Okay. Someone from this row right here, what should I combine next? Or what should I bring next to the 13 in this section here? Negative n. Negative n. Good, because we have to add a negative n, so we're going to really just put minus n here. Good. Okay. Someone from this section, what should I write next to that? We got 13 minus n. Good, minus 4 square root of 9 minus n. Thank you. Okay, and I'm going to bring the rest of the problem down. Okay, good. Someone in this section, tell me what I would do now to combine like terms. Someone from this section. We have a, a, this new math sentence. I want to, we have step 4. Let's all read step 4 to your neighbor really quick. Okay, good. So is the second radical term isolated, yes or no, class? No. no. Okay, this section. What would you do to isolate that, that second radical term? Subtract 13 and add n. Okay, good. So we're going to subtract 13 and add n. Okay, so what's uh, 1 minus 13? Good. What's uh, negative 5n plus n? Good, negative 4n. Okay. Bring down the rest of the problem. we got negative 4, 9 minus n. Okay. Next step. What should I do? Turn to your neighbor and describe what you would do next. Okay. What would you do, everyone? Square both sides. Okay. So let's square both sides. What's uh, negative 4 squared? 16, good. Okay. What's uh, not square root of 9 minus n squared? 9 minus n. 9 minus n. And what should I do there? Should I leave it like that? Nope. Okay. You're going too fast. Parentheses. Okay. I need you guys to think while we go through this. 9 minus n. Okay. Right side. Square it out for me and tell me what my trinomial will be here. Ready? Go. I'm going to call on you about 30 seconds. Positive 96n. Good. Well, last term is 16n squared, like I said earlier. Okay. I want to pause this here. Did we, we didn't do anything wrong. I want you to know that you didn't do anything wrong. But aren't these big numbers? Yeah. Okay, so what's something we could have done before we squared it? Look at this term, this term, and this term. We could have divided by negative 4, okay? But now we've, we've squared negative 4, so we we've, have 16 all the way across. So what's a common factor across the left side and each of the terms on the right? Good. So let's divide everything by 16. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just sometimes you have to deal with bigger numbers if you take a step forward. So we're dividing everything by 16. So we got 9 minus n. What's 144 divided by 16? No. Nope. What's 144 divided by 16? Nine, good. Okay. What's ninety six n divided by sixteen? You see how much harder it is all of a sudden because we didn't factor it out. Six n, good. And then sixteen n squared divided by sixteen is n squared. Okay. So this problem, I want you to finish it now. You have. Uh, remember, you is this in descending order? No. No. How many solutions should you have? What's the largest exponent here? Two. Two. So how many solutions should I have? Two. Two, okay, so finish this problem up for me. Do not check for solutions. I just want you to get to the point of of the two final answers before checking for external solutions. Good. You should have combined like terms, so you got n equals to negative 7 and n equals to 0, okay? Good. Thumbs up if you uh, agree with me. Thumbs down if you're lost. Okay, good. Okay, so now what's the last step? Okay, now we have to check. Okay, this seems really tedious. You do all this work, you're like, I still have to check. Okay, so now let's check it. Eyes up here. Negative 7. What's 9 minus a negative 7? 16. Good. Square root of 16 is? 4. Okay, good. So what's 2 minus 4? Negative 2. Good. Now, remember what Ms. Good said last week? Can the square root of anything be equal to negative 2? No. no. So what do we know about negative 7? 
It doesn't work. That's correct. So it's 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 an extraneous solution. Now let's put in zero. Nine minus zero is what? Nine. Nine square root of nine. Three. Two minus three. Negative, Negative one. Can just stopping here. We don't even have to do the right side. Can the square root of something be negative one? No. no. So that is also an extraneous solution. So are there any solutions here? No. No. So it's no solution. So you did all that work just to say that there aren't any answers. Okay? Why? You have to check your answers. That's the way sometimes it is. Okay? Shh. Let me tell you something. 